Want to get better at World of Tanks? I'm your Watt Coach, 13 Disciple, and this is Coach's Corner. Welcome back to our next replay. Max will be joining us in reviewing this one yet again. Hey, Max. Or he'll be sleeping, one of the two. All right, let's check out the vehicle lineup. All right, the first observation we have here is that we are tier eight in a tier six room, okay? And this is uh, really important to note because our team is relying heavily on us to carry our own weight. One of the uh, easiest mistakes that I make when I'm top tier in a three tier lineup is that I become way too overconfident and I overextend, I push too hard and I play too aggressively. So my recommendation is to play aggressive, but be very careful about pushing it too far. The biggest, scariest tank on the enemy team is that defender, so we'll have to keep an eye out for him wherever he ends up on the map. We have a few tier seven heavies, a few tier seven, uh, we got a medium, a couple tank destroyers, and we got a handful of tier sixes, a couple of lights, and only one artillery. On this map, there's a few options that we can do. The first being you can pop up here next to this rock and look for shots in this area. You can really only do that if one of your own allied light tanks comes and takes this position in this bush here. From here, he can spot vehicles in this area and possibly in this crossing. If you don't have a light tank that's making that play, don't bother going up there because you won't be able to spot it for yourself. Next, you can head on down this way. Over here, you can head into the gully and play some pretty okay haul down ridges in that area. Uh, you can also come to the other side of the map and play a little bit haul down area over here as well. So that's pretty much it for steps. Let's uh, let's get into this match here. Just a reminder that I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. So if you'd like to see this kind of commentary, except for my own gameplay and in a live setting, um, pop on over and check us out. If you'd like to have your replay featured, in the description will be a link to my Discord. Inside the Discord, there's a channel called Coach's Corner. In that channel is where we post replays and uh, we discuss how to play better. So I see you heading to the 1-2 line here. That's all right. It looks like you've got plenty of support heading to the opposite side. It's probably okay to split up your top tier vehicles because wherever that defender is, you're going to need a top tier vehicle to help your, uh, your smaller vehicles out on that. Looks like your 5916 has gone for some early spots. Nobody went into the middle of the map, so the SU-152 on your team has very few targets to be shooting at. Mm, probably not necessary to poke out that far. Um, I see you're pinging these bushes right here. It's pretty unlikely that anyone would be in those bushes because of the direction that your 5916 came. Uh, unless somebody came straight into these bushes, um, it's unlikely. What you could do, if you really wanted to know if there was somebody in these bushes, is pull back just far enough. So I would pull back for the front of your tank to be just there, and then I would shoot randomly in this direction, and then pull back behind the rock, and wait to see if your sixth sense goes off. If your sixth sense goes off, that means there's definitely gotta be somebody in one of these bushes in the middle of the map, um, possibly up in this tank destroyer area here, uh, but this will tell you pretty well if there's something that can spot you in this area. Yeah, your team's got a pretty even split between the flanks, which is probably a good thing. Your SU-100 is not in a good spot, and your 152 is relocating to help the 8-9 line. I guess the SU-100 is protecting cap and artillery, but he could be doing that further up. All right, the first victim, we see a KV-3, looks like he's gonna cross, and he definitely is. So I would say, you probably should have tried for a tracking shot there, but it's good that you got damage on the crossing. He takes damage without you taking damage, which is important. It looks like you could get another shot in on the right-hand side, if you're quick. Yep, there he is. Ooh, nice snapshot. 
That's two shots of unreturnable fire. He's now uh, pretty low on hit points. Ooh, someone just missed from behind. You want to hug that rock further forward. Yep, it's that firefly. That's okay. Taking a little bit of hit. Remind you to stay tucked in as close as you can. Our poor tier six is getting slaughtered. This is still a good spot. I'd, I don't think I'd push in anywhere. I'd hang out here and wait for the T29, the Panther, and the KV-3 to maybe make pressure. We see the Defender is in the north, facing the 7032 and the IS-2 by himself. Hopefully those guys can handle the Defender on their own. They have the tools. Let's hope they uh, use them wisely. There's a Type 64 pushing your 5916 in the middle. Perhaps the SU-152 can give a hand. Here we go. That's one shot. You might be able to squeeze another one in that gap that the KV-3 was pinged in. Oh, it looks like the Panther's gonna stop there. The Type 64 did kill the 5916, so you gotta be careful that he might be coming up behind you. Alright, we've got shots on the approaching 152, backing off. This is good. Good plays all around. Try and track him if you can. Well, your aim wasn't centered on the track, but you did scatter into his track, which is good. That means you won't take fire from him. Whoa, 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 whoa. We are pushing out way too far here. Look at this. We're, to, we're completely exposed to everything over here. Listen, if you're trying to engage a target, you want to expose the least amount of your tank as possible. Stay as tucked into this rock and expose as, as only enough that you need to get shots. Otherwise, stay as far back as possible. In this instance, I see you probably pushed out to try and get that tracking wheel. You could have shot the one in the back and stayed a little bit further back. It's good that we're pulling back between shots. That keeps us as much in cover as possible. That KB-3 is still to the right, and he might be kind of hard to spot. Looks like the defender is now by himself with a lot of a, a lot of your tanks are going to get after him. That's good. It looks like you're about to win the 8-9 line. So one thing I want to observe right now is if we look at the mod here, there's still quite a few tanks that aren't lit, including the AT-15A. We know the Firefly is somewhere in this area, and it's possible the JP or one of those tank destroyers could be up in this area, but as our team goes through, they'll spot that pretty quickly, um, and then pretty soon we'll have a pretty good idea of what's left on this side of the flank. T29 moving in, we take in our shot, we're on reload, back off. Okay, so one thing I want to point out here is you just took a shot from the T29 for like no reason. So during your reload, just hide. You can back up, you can hide, there's no problem with that, no shame in that. And even if you backed up even just a little too far, taking 150 damage from the Firefly is still less than taking 320 from a T29. That's a good tracking shot there. That's going to help your allies out. And now you've taken a hit from the Indian Panzer because yet again, we're poked just a little too far out. Again, when you're reloading, pull back. If you're able to get that tracking shot from further back, pull back. Always only expose your vehicle just enough to get damage. He's retracted and now we backed up. Poof! The Indian Panzer, we avoided his shot. The KV-3 has got to be looking. Yeah. So he's between the two rocks there. I see you're trying to line it up. He's more to the right. More to the right. That's all right. We didn't take the blind fire. I would say take it anyway. So there's a Nazorn in the middle, and he seems like he's overextended. Okay. If we look on the minimap, this defender is going to die very soon, and all of these tanks are going to suddenly be in this area, which means this Nazorn is going to be in a bit of a crossfire. The second thing I want to know is you've got a KV-3 and a Panther out here. It's time to start thinking about relocating. One of the areas that you can go is into the middle of the map and then roll up this road here, especially once this blob of tanks moves in down here and they gather this map control. This gives you a pretty good opportunity to either go this way or this way, depending on where the enemy tanks are and where they come up. The Nazorn, you can make quick work of him. You can throw some HE into your gun and pen his superstructure pretty easily with that. So he should not pose too much of a threat here. We are pretty low on health. That KV-3 certainly put a big shot of damage into us.
Your team is pushing forward into them. Yep. So your team is going to clean these guys up pretty quick. Now is definitely the time that I would be relocating towards the center here. And I'd be definitely looking to finish off the Nazorn. Because by the time I move in, those two will likely be dead. Especially since there's a full health TS5. Well, he's almost full out. There's still a, a healthy TS5 on this flank here. All right, we're relocating. Looks like we're just gonna go ahead and push with the team. We did see that the Indian Panzer did destroy our own KV-3, so he is still in the back there. We're gonna hug the right-hand side with the IS, that's okay. You gotta be really careful pushing into this area because it's very easy to get stuck into a crossfire very quickly. You wanna just see what's in the left. Okay, we're just gonna find everybody with the remaining hit points we have. There's the Firefly, we finally spotted him. So you gotta be careful here. The TS-5 knows there's a vehicle here, you know there's a vehicle here. Um, what you don't know is if there's a vehicle up here, or if there's a vehicle coming this way, or if there's a vehicle in here, which there still could be, because you still have an unspotted AT-15 and Yag Panther. okay? So if you want to brawl in this area, you want to hug this side. Because if you, if you go this way, then you are at maximum exposure to any vehicle that's in this flanking area coming this way, okay? You want to hug this side and only show enough of your tank to get shots of damage. We found the AT-15, which is good. We know the Indian Panzer is still over here. Oh, we're pushing in way too hard. So I see the plan is to go alongside and make him turn his gun, which will help your team but you just lost every single hit point you had left when you probably didn't need to. And again, the Indian Panzer suddenly appears to the side of your allies. So if you had tucked into here, you would have proxy spotted the Indian Panzer coming up this way, and then you could have rotated your tank to face this way, and then you would have allowed your allies to push through while you tried to engage the Indian Panzer, which you could have had, you could have suffered maybe two shots, you'd at least get through one with them but you could at least angle your tank well and try and stay hull down. By diving onto the AT-15, you take a hit from him and the Firefly that's in the middle of the map, not to mention there's still an unspotted Nazorn. What you try to want to do is maybe get a tracking shot to prevent him from turning, but with the Firefly out there, you're not going to last much longer anyways. Ouch, that's rough. Hey, we set a fire on the AT-15. That's good for your team. And you did turn him. So... If you're the AT-15 and you're in this similar scenario, don't turn to follow the tank that's flanking you. Stay your armor in front of the most amount of threats. Don't turn. You'll take more damage by turning than if you just stay pointing straight on. And now your allies have actually split their damage by rotating apart from each other, which is unusual. If the TS-5 had rotated back this way and you both engaged the full health Indian Panzer, um, they likely would have survived here. There's still an unspotted JP, or there was a formerly spotted JP in the middle. This match is still up in the air, actually. Okay, we've taken out the Firefly. Hopefully the Indian Panzer goes down soon. He just destroyed our IS, and he's finally taken some damage from our team. But I bet he brawls that TS-5 down. That would be my guess. The Nazorn is pushed through, the JP is now gone. See, we could have finished out that Nazorn and we could have gone after the JP without driving into a crossfire. Yep, so it definitely looks like your team will be able to uh, clean this one up. Overall, there weren't that many mistakes in this battle and all I really did was point out that there was another avenue to push through and take a, take a little bit more map control from the enemy. Um, but overall, this was a great replay, and I appreciate you sending it in. Um, 2800 and 346 is nothing to be ashamed of. All I'm saying is, you could play even better. That's the moral of this story. You could, you could have even more damage and even more assist. You're getting there. Thanks for sending this in, and we'll catch you on the next Coach's Corner.